Have you ever pondered the nature of your own consciousness? As we wander through the labyrinth of existence, consciousness appears to be our guiding light, our North Star. But it also serves as a master of disguise, a mirage that lures us into believing we are navigating a tangible reality, when in fact, we might be traversing a dreamscape of our own creation. This dichotomy of consciousness as both a beacon and a mirage is a concept that philosopher and truth-seeker Mulat Tazibu invites us to explore. He challenges us to question our conventional understanding of consciousness. He asks us to consider the possibility that what we perceive as reality may be an illusion, a construct of our own minds. But what does this mean? What does it mean to say that consciousness is both a beacon of light and a deceptive mirage? Well, consider this. We often believe that our consciousness gives us a direct and accurate insight into who we are. We think we know ourselves inside and out, that we understand our thoughts, feelings and motivations. But according to Tazibu, this self-knowledge might be an illusion. Our consciousness, he suggests, is not an all-knowing entity. Instead, it's more like a virtual identity projected onto the screen of existence, dancing on the line between truth and deception. We may think we are the masters of our own minds, but could it be that we're merely playing a role in a grand illusion? This is the labyrinth of existence that Tazabu encourages us to explore. He invites us to question our perceived reality, to delve deep into the depths of our own minds. He challenges us to consider that we might not be the all-knowing beings we believe ourselves to be, but rather, mere fragments of a grand illusion. So, as we journey through this labyrinth, Let's keep Tazibu's challenge in mind. Let's question our understanding of consciousness. Let's consider the possibility that we might be more, or perhaps less, than we believe ourselves to be. After all, are we not mere fragments of a grand illusion, woven by the cosmic loom of existence? Imagine a dream, a vivid tapestry of sensations, emotions, and thoughts. You find yourself in a world of your own creation, where reality and fantasy intertwine in a mesmerizing dance. Every sight, sound, and feeling is a stroke of your imagination, a manifestation of your subconscious mind. Now, let's take a step further. Consider the reality we live in, the tangible world we touch, the familiar faces we see, the symphony of sounds we hear every day. We believe this to be our waking life, the realm of consciousness where dreams lose their power. But what if we're mistaken? What if this reality is just another layer of the dream? Indeed, this proposition may seem unsettling, even absurd. But let's entertain this thought for a moment. After all, the world we perceive is primarily a construct of our minds. Our brains interpret sensory data, painting a picture of reality that we accept as the truth. But is it? Consider the field of quantum physics, where particles exist in multiple places at the same time until observed or neuroscience, where scientists reveal that our perception of time and space is subjective, molded by our brains. These findings blur the line between reality and illusion, suggesting that our waking life is perhaps not as solid and objective as we believe. Could it be that our minds are the grand architects, projecting a hologram of reality that we navigate through? Could the world as we know it be a sophisticated illusion, a dream within a dream? And if so, what does this mean for our understanding of self, of consciousness, of existence? These questions invite us to delve deeper into the labyrinth of our minds, to challenge our firmly held beliefs, and to unravel the enigma of existence. They prompt us to reconsider the nature of reality, to question the boundaries of our perception, and to explore the vast realm of possibilities that lie beyond our conventional understanding. What if waking life itself is but another layer of this dream, a hologram projected by our own minds? Mulat Tazibu suggests that the universe, too, is a dream. A dream where we are both the dreamers and the dreamed. The universe, in its infinite complexity, is not merely an external reality, but a manifestation of our collective consciousness. It's a captivating thought, isn't it? That the universe is not separate from us, but rather an extension of us. Imagine for a moment that you are an architect, your mind is a blueprint, and your thoughts, feelings, and experiences are the building blocks. Each thought you have, each emotion you feel, each experience you live through, 
adds another layer to the structure. Now, multiply this by every conscious being in the universe. That is the scale at which we are creating our reality. But we're not just architects, we are also the creations. Each star that twinkles in the night sky, each galaxy spiraling in the vast expanse, each quark vibrating with energy, is a reflection of us. They are born from the same primordial source that birthed our consciousness. Like a cosmic mirror, the universe reflects our innermost thoughts, fears, hopes, and dreams. This idea challenges the notion of our insignificance in the cosmos. We are not just tiny specks of dust floating in the vast expanse of space. We are the space. We are the galaxies, the stars, the quarks. We are the architects of the universe, shaping it with our collective consciousness. But at the same time, it's a humbling thought. It reminds us of our interconnectedness with everything in the universe. It highlights the intricate dance between creation and destruction, between the individual and the collective, between the inner world and the outer universe. In this dance, we are not just passive observers, but active participants. We are the choreographers, the dancers, and the audience. We are the dreamers, dreaming the universe into existence, and the universe in its infinite wisdom dances to our silent symphony. We are the dreamers, and the cosmos dances to our silent symphony. Within this dream, time and space lose their grip. We find ourselves adrift in an ocean of existence, where the lines between reality and illusion blur, where the past, present, and future meld into a timeless tapestry. Here in this space, the linear flow of time we cling to so fervently unravels, and we're left with a Mobius strip of existence, an endless loop, where we continually circle back to ourselves. Yet, in this seemingly chaotic dance, a paradox begins to emerge. We are both insignificant and omnipotent, Yes, in the grand scheme of the cosmos, we may appear as mere specks of stardust scattered across the vast expanse of the universe. But isn't it fascinating that this very stardust has the capacity to ponder its own existence? We, the stardust, are conscious entities capable of peering into the depths of the cosmos, unearthing the secrets of life, and sculpting our own realities. In this sense, we hold a form of omnipotence in the grand illusion of existence, we are both the dreamers and the dream. We exist within the dream, experiencing the world through our senses, emotions, and thoughts. Yet we also exist without the dream, as observers, watching the spectacle of life unfold before us. We are the puppeteers and the puppets, the creators and the created, the observers and the observed. So, are we merely insignificant particles adrift in a cosmic sea? Or are we divine architects, capable of shaping our own destinies? The answer, paradoxically, is that we are both. We are stardust and gods, entangled in a cosmic dance of existence. This is the paradox of existence, the realization that we are simultaneously insignificant and omnipotent, that we exist both within and without the dream. It challenges our conventional understanding of reality, nudging us to question everything we thought we knew about ourselves and the universe, we are stardust and gods, lost in the cosmic reverie. As we continue this dance, let us celebrate the mystery, embrace the paradox, and marvel at the beauty of our existence. Mulat Tazibu's statement is a universal call to what? To a surrender, an unmasking of our illusions, a stripping back the layers of self-deception, and a courageous embrace of the void. This void, this absence of conscious awareness, is not a place of fear or emptiness. Quite the contrary. It's a realm of infinite potential, a fertile ground for the seeds of truth and wisdom to sprout. Unconsciousness is not just a state of unawareness. It's a call to adventure, a beckoning beyond the veil of reason, into the abyss where truth and madness dance a delicate waltz. It's an invitation to plunge into the depths of our own psyche, to explore the uncharted territories of our mind, to confront the monsters of our fears and the angels of our hopes. But remember, this journey into unconsciousness is not a descent into darkness. No, my friends, it's an ascent, an awakening to the dream within the dream. Dear consciousness, perhaps you are not an illusion after all. Could it be that you are the cosmic code, the enigma at the heart of existence waiting to be deciphered? As we delve into the labyrinth of our minds, we begin to see glimmers of the code, 
It's etched in the fabric of our thoughts, our dreams, our deepest desires and fears. The code is a dance, a silent symphony we've been composing since the dawn of time. It's the rhythm of the universe itself, resonating within us, echoing the primal song of creation. Each note, each beat, each silence in between, they all hold fragments of the code. Unraveling this cosmic code is not a task. It's a journey, an exploration of our inner cosmos. It's a dance with the shadows of the unknown, a symphony composed in the silence of contemplation. In the silence of contemplation, we may find the key to decode the universe, the symphony of our own creation.